Uh, welcome everybody to this virtual community meeting regarding the upcoming Hanley and Central Meadowbrook area street reconstruction project. My name is Greg Robbins and I'm project manager with the city of Fort Worth transportation and public works department. Uh, on this call as well are uh, representatives from the engineering consultant that is doing the design on this project and they'll be around at the end to help answer questions if there is any. Um, also on this call, we have Ms. Dina Bivens, the councilwoman for council district five. Thank you, Ms. Bivens, for taking the time to attend. Um, is there anything you'd like to say before we get started? Yes, I would, Greg, and thank you so much for your careful thought in putting this presentation together. And I wanna thank you for the members of the community who are on the call. I, I wanna commend community engagement. We're trying the, as best we can to get the word out to people about virtual meetings such as this. I think the challenge we're having is the calendar on the city webpage has changed. And so we'll be talking about that to staff to see just what we can do. But I know that city staff did robocalls. And so for those of you from the community, Paul and others, what I would ask you to do is just tell people, look, you know, there are gonna be some improvements coming up and these are gonna be major. And if you didn't attend the meeting, you know, it's online and you can contact the staff that's on here. If, if you all will do that and whatever way you have of communicating with your neighbors, it'll be a big help because I'd hate for people to be surprised because this is not a big turnout, but it's better than some we've had. So if you would just be good stewards and share the news, I think it'll let people know what to plan for. And with that, Greg, I'll mute myself and just sit back and watch. Thank you, Ms. Bivens. So this presentation is meant to provide uh, you, the residents, with some information about the scope of this project and what's happening in your area and give the community uh, the opportunity to, uh, to provide input, make suggestions, or ask questions about the project and how they're going to be impacted. Uh, here's the agenda of what I hope to cover in my brief presentation. I'll be talking about the project as a whole, uh, providing a summary of the improvements uh, on each street associated with this project, discussing the expected schedule moving forward and blocking off some time at the end to answer questions and receive input from you. So first we'll talk about the overall scope of the improvements that are associated with this project. This project is part of the 2018 bond and due to the number of streets associated with this project, it was broken up into two contracts, contracts eight and nine. Uh, separating the streets into two contracts allows for quicker design and construction progress as the construction time, construction start times can be staggered and both projects can be under construction at the same time. Uh, there are six streets associated with contract eight and they are Craig Street from Hanley to Major Street, Cravens Road from Meadowbrook Drive to Greenlee Street, Halbert Drive from Route Street to Church Street, uh, Halbert Drive from Beatty Street to Craig Street, Hightower Street from Grandview Drive to Weiler Boulevard, Major Street, and R Major Street from Route Street to Craig Street. So you can see there on the, the mini map inset um, that we have the different streets highlighted for where the improvements are going to be, and you can see the limits if your street is in Contract 8. <laughs> contract 9, uh, there are four streets. We have Benton Avenue from Old Hanley Road to South Hampshire Boulevard, House Street from Panola Avenue to the cul-de-sac, Windomere Street from Benton Avenue to Springfield Street, and Vanada Lane from Emily Drive to Weiler Boulevard. And you'll see that uh, Vanada Lane has three numbers associated with it. We'll get to why that is uh, here in just a little bit when we get to the specific improvements for Vanada Lane. <clears throat> The next few slides show the existing conditions of these streets and why they were slated for reconstruction. You can see from the pictures the issues that, that we're going to be correcting. Um, we have damaged asphalt pavement, missing curb and gutters, damaged or missing sidewalk, damaged or missing concrete driveways, as well as water and sewer utilities under the street that either need to be replaced or upsized. These pictures are here to give you an idea of what you can expect the new streets to look like. Uh, so including new asphalt pavement with concrete curbs and gutters, new sidewalks, 
new ADA wheelchair ramps where they're needed. And also included but not shown here are, of course, the new water and sewer mains, uh, which are also includes new water and sewer service lines, meters, and sewer clean out. <clears throat> now I'll go through each street individually and discuss the improvements that are expected to be made. Um, I'll start with the streets that are in contract eight. Craig Street will be receiving new asphalt pavement and concrete curb and gutter, as well as uh, have a five foot sidewalk installed on one side of the road, alternating from the, from the south to the north side near Lewis Street. In addition, the water and sewer utilities under the street are being upsized or replaced as well. You can see we're replacing the existing 10 inch sewer, um, replacing the existing uh, eight inch sewer on the other side of the street and upsizing the existing, existing six inch water main to eight inch. Uh, also, as well, we'll be constructing new concrete driveways with a minimum of 11-foot width and a t approximately 10-foot width, depending on the right-of-way uh, width in that area. On Cravens Road, um, we will be upsizing the existing 6-inch sewer to an 8-inch and replacing the existing 8-inch existing water line. Um, for paving improvements, we will be providing new asphalt streets with new concrete curb and gutters, uh, once again, and new concrete driveways. And for Cravens Road, we will be installing a five-foot sidewalk on the west side of the street. This section of Halbert Drive from Beatty to Craig uh, will be upsizing the existence, existing six-inch water and sewer mains uh, to eight-inch. Uh, be providing new asphalt street, new concrete curb and gutters, new concrete driveways, and there, there will be a sidewalk on both sides of the road for this section of street. The other section of Halbert Drive from Route to Church, uh, similar improvements for the water and sewer. We are upsizing the existing six inch water and sewer to eight inch. Um, the paving improvements are, are similar, new asphalt streets, new concrete curb and gutters, and we will be constructing uh, new concrete driveways, and installing sidewalk on the west side of the road uh, for this particular segment. Hightower Street will um, be receiving a, a new uh, eight inch water main replacing the existing four inch. We'll also be uh, providing new asphalt streets, new concrete curb and gutters, new concrete driveways, and a five foot sidewalk on both sides of the street. Um, for Major Street, we're going to be upsizing the existing 6-inch and 8-inch uh, sewer and water mains to 8-inch and also uh, providing new asphalt streets. The, the curb and gutter and uh, other uh, sidewalks and uh, driveways in this area are, are new, so we're only going to be replacing the asphalt street. So now we'll go to East Street individually that are associated with contract nine. House Street will uh, be receiving a, an upgrade to the water and sewer uh, mains going from six inch to eight inch. Uh, we have a new asphalt street going in with new concrete curb and gutters and we'll be constructing new concrete driveways. Benton Avenue will also be receiving an up Size, uh, water and sewer main from six inch to eight inch. Um, similar improvements uh, for paving, new asphalt streets, new concrete curb and gutters, and new concrete driveways. Windermere Street will also be uh, receiving an upsize from their uh, existing six inch water and sewer to an eight inch. Um, they'll also be getting new asphalt streets, new concrete curb and gutters, and uh, new concrete driveways. Uh, finally, we have Ben Lane. Um, we'll be replacing the existing existing eight inch sewer line and upsizing the existing six inch water to an eight inch. Um, we'll be providing new asphalt streets, new concrete curb and gutters, new concrete driveways, a five foot sidewalk on both sides of the street. And we'll also be removing the fence that's between Emily and Grandview. As of right now, there's a fence that crosses perpendicular that separates that street. Um, from, and that's the reason it was shown as three different segments 
in the previous slide. So we're going to be removing that fence and uh, connecting those two sides of the street between Emily and Grandview. So let's talk briefly about the upcoming schedule. Um, this is the schedule for contract eight. I've listed the streets here um, so that if you don't remember which contract your street was in. So this is for Craig, Cravens, Halbert, and Hightower. Um, we have received or we have received 60% design on this um, on this project. We've reviewed it. We're expecting 90% design from the consultant very soon. After that, we hope to advertise for bids in the spring and receive bids in, in, in around the same time period. Once we get uh, council approval to award the contract, we hope to start construction on this project in in the early fall. We expect this project to take approximately a year to complete once we get started. So we're looking at a, an end date for the construction in the early fall of uh, 2022. This is our anticipated schedule for contract nine. This is for Benton, House, Windermere, and Vanatta. We're a little further along in the design. We have uh, received the 90% plans and we are just about finished reviewing them. So we hope to receive the 100% plans very soon, uh, hopefully in December or maybe January, and we can advertise for bids early in 2021 and um, hopefully get approval from council in the spring to begin work in the summer of 2021. This project will also approximately take a year to complete in construction, we expect. So we're looking at early summer of 2022 to, to finish the construction. All right, so now we've come to the end of the, uh, my presentation. Uh, we'll now move into our questions and input portion of the presentation. So if you have questions, uh, you can put them in the chat and we'll take a look at those first and then uh, we'll get to anybody who may have questions on the phone. Craig, we do have a few questions in chat. Um, I'll, I'll read those out to you. Um, first, uh, it, well, can you talk a little bit? I know we don't have a contractor yet, but can you talk a little bit about how traffic would be rerouted during construction uh, in a conscientious way that won't impact the surrounding neighborhoods? So once we get a contractor on board and we'll have a better idea of how they're going to do this, but yes, we will make sure that the contractor um, reroutes traffic in the most efficient way so that we have the least amount of impact on you and your access to your house. Uh, we want to make sure that we're maintaining uh, access to your driveways and just as much as possible during construction. We don't want to, we don't want to block you out for long periods of time. And if there's any, any time that you won't have access to your driveway, such as when your actual driveway concrete is being poured, we'll make sure and let you know beforehand the contract will make sure and let you know so that you can plan around that thanks greg um since the craig portion from handling includes the school zone can you clarify a little bit about how traffic will work around that school zone especially with uh, parents who pick up and drop off um, handley already has pretty heavy traffic during the, that time frame uh, when, mm -hmm. And so people, because they try to circumvent the school zone, so the construction mm -hmm. could make it difficult. We'll make sure and tell the contractor that he has to um, work with the school and be in communication with the school. And we'll, we with the city will be in communication with the school as well to make sure that um, we're, we're coordinating with them and make sure people are able to still pick up and drop off their kids that buses are still able to get to where they need to go and um, just make sure that we don't have any, any negative impact on parents' ability to get their kids to school. Thanks, Greg. Can you put the slides back up that show the street names again? Sure. I have a question, Greg. When you, the presentation is so thorough, I'm thinking about my 80 and 90 year old friends in, in Handley who are not on the call. I did get an email from one lady who says this is a great list of streets. Uh, how soon can we either have this presentation on you all site or how soon can you just send me a link to it? 
Um, I'll let Jeff answer that question. I started to email sure. Jeff. Um, I can, it, it's usually pretty quick. I have to, um, WebEx will send me a link to the presentation and then I send it to our uh, cable guys and they convert it for our, our YouTube website. So it's probably be Monday or Tuesday by the time it's ready. As soon as that's up, it would be good if everyone who's on here from the community knows about it or else if you let me know who's there, but this is some good information. I just don't want people to wake up and be surprised when they see, you know, the streets being torn up. So as soon as we could get that, I'd be real happy because there are some people who really need to know this. And I just want to commend you for putting it together. Thank you. And I, I have one more. I have one more question since there's nothing else in chat. Uh, as you know, we had some real consternation from some water work that was done on church. And one one lady saw a neighbor get new curbs and gutters, but she didn't get any, but it was because of sewer work that was done. And so is it safe to assume that the new curbs and gutters that you guys are putting in are coming only because the streets were so bad? So as part of this contract, um, we are gonna be replacing all, all curbs and gutters. The only place that won't get any is the, a short section on Major Street but they already have uh, curbs and gutters that are in good condition. So, um, but every other street that's listed here, we are gonna be full replacing all curbs and gutters. And my question is, that's because of the actual condition of the street, is it not? Oh, yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. That way I can explain it and, and be, you know, correct in what I'm saying. Thank you. Hi, Julie Ledford, I see you. Craig, I do have a couple more questions. Uh, one, when we once we advertise and we have a contractor, could we request um, that Craig Street be done when school's not in session to help minimize that a little bit? I don't know what the phasing is. <laughs> it, we, yeah. it would be definitely something we would talk to the contractor about and see if that's possible um, with the amount of work because Craig Street is is the longest street in the project. So it's going to take a very long time to do uh, in comparison to the other streets. Um, so being able to to work only when school is not in session, the, the three months when school is not in session, I, we'll have to see what the contractor can do. Okay. And the only other question I see right now in, in chat is about uh, sequencing. But um, has that been, have, we haven't thought that through yet. That's not going to happen until the contractor's on board. Right, once we have a contractor, they'll provide us with their construction schedule and how they plan to phase the project. They may start on any of the streets in, in the contract. Um, we, we have some input with them as far as we would, you know, prefer you to, to take these items into consideration, but they, they provide us with their phasing plan and how they plan to uh, tackle the construction. Most likely they'll have a crew that does utilities and a crew that does paving and They'll start on one street with their utility contractor, finish the utilities, move to another street, and then the paving contractor will move will move in behind them. But we won't know the specifics of it, where they're going to start um, on each street until we have the contractor on board. Greg, I, I have three questions that have been sent to me privately, uh, and I'm going to, the one of them is, are we going to have door hangers? And because that's a good way of advising people. Yes, ma'am. We will have door hangers uh, notifying the residents uh, during different phases. Okay, I'm I'm going to ask that we make sure we can get those door hangers up at least five days in advance, not the the night before, because that's caught people off guard. So if we plan it, we should be able to make that happen. Uh, the the other question that I have is, let's see, is there any way to appeal this construction because the traffic on Craig is so bad right now? And I think you need to address that this is part of a bond package, which is a legal you know, process that we have to abide by. But there's real concern on Craig. And the question is how, how, to, how, to, how to stop this.
Um, is anybody from legal, anybody from legal on the call? I don't think we have anybody from legal on the call. Okay, if, if you, uh, I'll what I'll do is email you guys that question. But as best as I can answer it, I can tell you that this is a project. These were projects that were voted on by the citizens who said we need these streets improved. Uh, the mayor will always tell people construction is inconvenient. And I know that people were very upset with me when we were redoing Hanley, but there had been just as much consternation because Hanley was in such bad shape. I don't think we can stop this construction because the voters did vote to fund it but we can offer some more contact with the staff so that we can mitigate that traffic on Craig as, as best as possible. Maybe some dynamic signage. And for those of you from the community, dynamic just means that flashing signage, maybe even having police station nearby. I've done that on Cook's Lane. So that, that that's an alternative, but I hope that person, I'll give that person my email address so you can reach out to me. And let's see, please put, Race track, okay. Scheduling. Oh, uh, this is an on here, but one question that I always get is, are you going to have people who speak English who can engage with the citizens because people will reach out, reach out to the workers they see, and it's always a problem when there's nobody who speaks English. There, we should almost always have a construction inspector on site. Uh, with the city that speaks English and we'll be able to um, directly engage with residents who have questions. Okay. If you'll leave this up a little bit just so I can respond to the private message I got, that's all I have. Someone wants to see a little bit bigger. Um, Ms. Ledford, do you want to see contract eight or nine or both? I can try to make, okay, I'll try to make it bigger. Hold on. I'll use my PowerPoint skills if I can. Oh, wait, hold on. Maybe I need to get rid of this. I think you should be able to see all the streets on this slide now. Is that a little better? Is that, can you see that now? Sorry, I understand though, viewing it in, in your presentation mode it makes it pretty small. And I'll I'll go in in go to the next slide too so you can see it. <clears throat> yeah, these are the streets in contract nine. Okay. No, you're not muted. You can talk. Yeah, take. Do you have a question on the yeah, phone? That's all. Hey, Greg, are you there? I am. Hello, Mr. Sims. Yeah. Uh, have you ever had a chance to look at the, the driveway approaches along our property and add those that are missing or talk to the, the uh, yes, designer sir. about I, that? Yes, sir. I, um, I sent that to our consultant for them to include in the plan. I saw that we, that we did miss a driveway. Well, I don't know. They're they're missing at least one. So, and you said the plans are ninety percent complete. Does those have to be added, or is there going to be a review after the plans are completed when they can be revised? Uh, the, there there will be a couple more um, plan reviews for this is for contract eight where Craig Street is. Uh, so we do have a couple of more reviews planned with the consultant to look at the look over the plan set, and make sure we got everything included. Okay, but you relayed that those stations and the driveways 
to the contract or the I'm sorry, could you repeat that, please? Well, I, I sent you an email when I first saw the plans and gave you some approximate yeah. stations along the, you know, the center line locating those driveways that were missed on our property. And I wondered if you'd relay yeah. that information to whoever was drawing the stuff up. I did, yes, sir. Okay, no response. I, I haven't seen a revised set of plans yet to see if it was included. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll send you another email and make sure we're staying on the same page with this stuff because I'd rather see it on the plans and have to go out there and talk to them when they're building it. Yes, sir. Uh, Ms. Bivens? Yes. Uh, hi, this is Beverly Sims. That was my husband. We have approximately uh, almost 500 feet on Craig Street, and we're very concerned uh, about all this. I don't remember two years ago the the bond election. In the bond elections, where are they posted? I mean, you know, the specifics, does it specifically show the streets? Are they posted somewhere? Yes, the yes, it, it, it's it's during the process that streets are identified that staff recommends and then the citizens have a chance for engagement. I wish we had somebody from legal on the call. Now, I promise you, if you send me your email address, you know, I'll get, get that issue, get the answer for you. But from what I recall, these were part of a bond package. And what I, what, what I know for sure is there are other people in Hanley, specifically on Church Street, who would welcome this type of work and in other communities, I've been able to get staff to move a project, say, for example, where they plan sidewalks with the folks in one sidewalks to somewhere else. And so the engagement at this level is very important. And if you will, just make sure you, you know, give me your email address. I've messaged you in there. And Sandy Bro, who is my district director, and I will put you in touch with and we'll engage with staff along with you to see what type of options so that we can specifically address your concerns. Yeah, because I'll tell you, the, the speed, we're the ones that ask about the speed. It's a racetrack now. You've probably heard this. It's a racetrack now. It's going to be a more of a racetrack. And at the first meeting we went, we logged on to several weeks ago, there was a lady that said it takes months and months and months to get a traffic study done. So she's she said it would take like nine months to a year to get a traffic study to put up put you know put through maybe some stop signs pull on Fred Street to slow the traffic down some. And so that's uh that's a big concern over here. I like hearing the concerns before we get started and I'm glad you're on the call. Uh, Jeffrey, is Lauren on this call this morning? Uh, no, ma'am, she's not on the call today. Uh, I believe Lane is here yes. uh, representing her. Yes, hi. <laughs> Please address you know, the, the concerns you're hearing as best you can right now so that at least they'll know that we're, we're hearing these concerns. And, you know, if it comes to moving some things, I'm never opposed to that. We just have to make sure that we can get the, all the parties involved. So from what you're hearing, what what do you say now? Sure, yeah. Um, so the traffic studies that are required for us to put in traffic signals or traffic stop signs um, does take a while. And that's mainly because they need to see the traffic during various seasons. He's the head you know, of like can you hear Project me? manager. Uh, so they need to see the traffic patterns at various times of the year, like when school is in session, when school is not in session, um, et cetera. So it does take a little while to do a traffic study. However, um, that can be done, um, it, you know, and it's stop sign added, it's, you know, the matter of mounting a, a, another sign. Um, at any point later on. So we can start requesting that traffic study 
Um, and if they do warrant a stop sign that can be added, you know, either during construction or after construction, um, with little cost and little impact. Can you, this is James Sims. Would it be reasonable to conduct a traffic study on Craig street before construction starts? It looks like we've got about a year to do that. And that way you'd have some data showing the difference <laughs> between how it is now, which is pretty bad. And then you can conduct one later if you feel it's necessary, because it's not going to get any better. I'll guarantee you. So it might be beneficial to conduct the traffic study now rather than waiting. Sure. Absolutely. If it hasn't already been requested, since it sounds like this was brought up before, um, then we will request it after this meeting and, um, you know, we'll, we'll keep you posted on what they find. Okay, so you are going to request a traffic study? Yes, we always do. Uh, when we get feedback like that, we bring it up to traffic management and request it. Uh, they okay. look at whether or not um, the, the study is, um, you know, feasible at certain times of the year, um, when they can get it scheduled, et cetera, with their, their contractor. And, um, but we can start the process and, and hopefully we can get there before construction starts. But like I said, if we don't, you know, the, the sign can be mounted at the culmination of that study. Uh, would, regardless Greg, of yeah, yeah, Greg has my email address. You're in contact with Greg, aren't you? Yes, sir. Okay. Would you ask, would you forward the uh, contact person in charge of the traffic studies email to Greg and let him send it to me so I can stay in touch with him too. I'd like to be involved in that in some way. Okay, absolutely. Yeah, our traffic man, our, our city traffic engineer is Raj Gupta. Um, but we usually uh, coordinate with some of his staff. So uh, we can get you a contact information for someone over there. That's, okay, that'd be good. Yeah. Oh. Ms. Bibbins, I, I was gonna yes. ask you, uh, if I send you an email, what I'd like to know too, why did it just stop at Major Street? Because beyond Major Street and behind the cemetery up here, you, you know, there's, there's not even any shoulders. There's a big ditch. I, some places it's four feet deep. It's just a narrow country road is what it is. And why wasn't that included in this improvement? That's an engineer's question. Uh, is that Greg or Jeffrey? Can you respond to that? And is it too late to include it? Um, this is Lane. I can I can try to respond to that. I think that um, you know, capital delivery, Greg. Um, you know, he's delivering what was um, you know in established in the bond book. Um, and to the other resident's point, um, the bond book is available online for the 2018 bond, and you can look in there and find the street list. Um, it's fortworthtexas.gov, and you can search and find the 2018 bond book, and the results will pull it right up. Um, can, can you make that available to those who signed up? Because the way we've redesigned the website, it's not the friendliest. But for those who signed up, it'd be helpful if you could just supply them the link to it. Okay, we can do that. Um, so uh, back to the other question. So we kind of, we deliver what is in that bond book. Um, how things make it into the bond book um, during the advanced you know, planning uh, portions of the bond is through our sponsoring departments, uh, through pavement management, um, and they look at a lot of different things. They look at whether or not the street is in good condition, what kind of improvements need to be made to that section of the street, um, whether those improvements can be done with a uh, contract maintenance project, or whether or not those improvements need to be funded out of the bond because they are um, likely to be more expensive in that section of road, et cetera. So there's a lot of variables there um, that lead to pavement management selecting the limits of our projects. Um, but once it goes to the bond, um, once it is approved in the bond, uh, we, we really can't do much to change the limits without 
um, you know, going through a, you know, a process to, um, I mean, basically the bond book sets our limits. <laughs> but, but Lane, let, let me ask you this, knowing what she's describing, you know, especially a four foot dip, I think it would be good for staff to look at that now. And if we have to do some type of patchwork until the next bond comes up, at least we could address it. So can we get such, can we get staff to take a look at that location near the cemetery? Because it might be something that we could do now. Absolutely. Yes, that's a very good point. If there's something like that that's unsafe, we definitely need to look at it now. And we can do something probably with maintenance. But uh, we'll look at it and see what what the dip is. Let, let me tell everybody on the call something, and, and Kerpo knows this for sure. When the bond meetings take place, staff always has recommendations, but I can tell you staff has always listened to the input from the citizenry because we were able to get the Handley Rec Center improved, and it was not in the plan, but the feedback from citizens is what made us include the Handley Meadowbrook Rec Center in plans for the expansion that you see now. So the good thing is that this meeting is recorded. Your concerns are on record, and I'll be getting with staff to make sure that we have a response for everyone. You know, on this call, you know, we didn't have a, have a lawyer, and so we all kind of played lawyer for you temporarily, but we will get responses to the concerns you have. Uh, I do know that the streets director is a fan of what they call speed tables, which is a, a real alternative to speed humps. I don't like speed tables in construction because they can mess up your tire. So I really want us to accelerate getting that traffic study done. And if there's got to be a way to get some stop signs there, because if you've ever left the rec center coming to Craig and trying to get to the schools, it can be a problem. And this construction will bog us down. And so yeah, I hope we can accelerate getting that study done and act accordingly. Thank you, Ms. Gibbons. Appreciate it. I did, uh, everyone, I did also post in the chat uh, the link to the 2018 bond. Um, that way you guys don't have to search for it. It's right there. You can copy it uh, if you want to look in detail on what, what was involved in the 2018 bond. Thank you so much. Can you please, oh. can you address my question that was in the chat about whether or not you're going to collaborate with the police to address the issue of speeding in the Hanley area? Because this is an ongoing issue that's exacerbated when we have construction that improves the road. It uh, makes, it causes an increase. So can the city work together with PD to help prevent that uh, becoming more of a problem in the future, please? Oh, so, yes, yeah, sorry, I was uh, copying and pasting the, the link here in the- Oh, in the, you were doing that, okay. So, uh, yes, that, that is one thing that we can do if there is an issue with speeding, uh, make sure and see if we can get someone uh, from the police department out there to monitor the issue. And uh, just as a side note, I know we're running out of time, but we've requested one of those signs on wheels that monitor speed, especially on Hanley, because we have people going up to 50, 55. And if we had one of those signs that sometimes on the west side where it shows your current speed and the posted speed limit, if we could have access to that in Hanley, I think it would definitely bring more attention to that issue and help people to self-regulate. Thank you. Yeah, Julie, that's what I was mentioning earlier. We call that dynamic signage. And that's, that's what I was talking about earlier. And I like dynamic signage because you can move it around. And we know that citizens will let us know where there are speed issues and we can easily move that around. So you know, I'll work with TPW and just try to work with PD to, to get that on the radar for us. Now, Greg, can you put your contact information back up too? Because I know you were switching to get this website, but that way folk will know who to contact when they have questions about this project. Yes, feel free to call me. My number's here, my email address is here. Uh, reach out to me with any questions that you think of uh, after this meeting or input, comments, anything. Especially once we get into construction, if you have issues during construction, 
um, you'll, you'll, there'll be an inspector assigned to the project, and I'll make sure and get his information to you as well uh, during the next meeting. Uh, and there will be another meeting about this once we go to construction. But um, my number is here. My email address, address is here. You can reach out to me at any point, and, and we can discuss whatever issues you have. And, and the Sims, please send me your email contact information as well. Okay, will do. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bivens. You guys take care. I've got another meeting, and I do have to really comb my hair for this one because I'm presenting. Thank you for being here, and I'll log off, but you still got some time remaining with staff, and I think you're in good hands. Everybody have a safe day. Thank you, Ms. Bivens. Through. Did we miss any chat questions? Any slides anybody needs me to put back up? So I, I guess. You again. Hello? Greg, I guess, but, can I'm you sorry. hear me? Hello? Yes, I, I do can. hear somebody. Yes, yes I'm, I'm Donna LaFawn. I'm in the Meadowbrook area. I need to ask you, will you be doing anything for Meadowbrook Drive? For Meadowbrook Drive? Yes. Uh, Are they planning to widen it a little bit? I'm thinking as you come across the 820 area, it seems to be awfully narrow, crowded street there. Um, no, Meadowbrook Drive isn't part of this project. Okay. You're, you're, you're picking it up then uh, east of that. Okay. Okay. So we, we, the only place where we touch Meadowbrook Drive is Cravens Road, and I'm going to zoom in so you guys all can see that. I know it's tiny. Um, okay. So we're, we're touching the intersection there. Uh, oops, sorry. We're touching uh, the intersection of Cravens and Meadowbrook. Okay, okay. Well, I'm a little bit north of that, and I wondered, I'm a little bit around the Oh, the Hanley Rec Center, but they, uh, Craig Street that goes into Meadowbrook is mighty narrow there. Craig Street doesn't intersect Meadowbrook. Or, or not Craig, it's... Um, Are you finished? Hey. Yeah. Uh, it's the street right by the shopping center that enters Meadowbrook. You've got 820, then you've got the shopping center, and then there's another side street, McGee. That is mighty narrow. And there seems, you know, seems to be a problem with traffic from time to time. You can't really get out of McGee Street onto Meadowbrook Drive. Okay. Can that be why? I'm sorry, say that again. Could that area be widened a little bit? Uh, unfortunately, we won't be in that area for this particular project. The only place we're going to be working near Meadowbrook is when we are doing the intersection with Cravens and Meadowbrook. Okay. 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 I know where you are. Okay. Well, uh, is there a way I can see a copy of the streets that are going to be uh, in the project? Sure. So this this is a list of the streets that are associated with Contract 8. So we have Craig Street, Ravens Road, uh, two sections of Halbert Drive, High Tower Street, and a uh, small section of Major Street. Um, okay. And then Contract 9. Uh, we have Benton Avenue, House Street, Windowmere Street, and Vanada Lane. Those are the, the streets that are associated with this project. Okay, you're farther east than I. Okay, I'm I'm uh, west of that area. Okay. Hmm. Well, maybe someday they can do that because it gets rather difficult to get out onto the brook there. McGee comes down and it's it's kind of narrow. Okay. Um, do you need my email so you could send me something? Uh, what information would you like, ma'am? It's, it's the information you just gave me. Could I have it in writing? Oh, or, sure. Okay. 
Do you what want to fax your email address here, or you can just email my, me? Because I couldn't, I couldn't seem to get my computer to work to go to your visual um, program today. The, the visual. Oh, I'm, I apologize. Okay. Yeah. Greg, she's a call-in user, so she doesn't have access to the screen. So. No, I yeah. don't. I, I apologize. I was just showing my screen like I assumed you could see. I apologize about that. No. <laughs> I'm going to try this next time to get in with you. But anyway, I'm on the phone because I could not get to the screen. It didn't seem to come out today. Okay. I, okay. So let me give you my email. Okay. Um, I'm ready. Okay. It's D O N N A L A F O N at A O L dot com. Did you get that? I believe I did, yes. Oh, good. All right. I'll try to get this computer to work again. I pushed all these buttons, but nothing happened, so I then resorted to my telephone. <laughs> Okay. Sorry about that. All right. Okay. So, yeah, you're farther east than where we're located. The McGee comes down to Meadowbrook. It's right by that shopping center, and it's very, very dark, and it's narrow. It's just a two-lane road, and it's it's difficult to get out onto Meadowbrook from that area. So, okay. You might want to make a note of that somewhere. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We, uh, Greg, we do have a couple, a couple of people have put questions in as well. Um, Karen, okay. you said you came in later. Uh, the PowerPoint slides will be available online. Um, the meeting's being recorded, so the whole re recording will be posted on the project website for people to watch. Um, that way you also hear the audio and the context for each slide. Um, if you guys would prefer, we can uh, get a PDF of the presentation to you as well. Uh, but we always prefer to, to have the recording done so you can hear everything that's going on during the presentation. Anyone else have questions? No, Julie, it's a different, um, that's a different link. Let me see if I can find it for you real quick. Yes, I'll put it in chat as soon as I find it. I'll copy and paste it and put it in the uh, in the slideshow so that it's preserved for the call in or for uh, the recording users. Greg, what's the um, do we know the project number? Uh, 101472. <laughs> I believe that is the project. Um, I think that's only one of the contracts, Greg. We may have to add the second contract. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, uh, Karen, it's 101. Number. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, Greg. Uh, so it's 101472. Go back to the big here. 101472. Are there any other any other questions from chat or from call in users? Well, if not, then uh, thank you to everyone who is in attendance today. Um, like I said before, here's my contact information. Um, feel free to reach out to me by phone or by email for uh, anything that you think of after this meeting, any questions or comments you have going on in, in, in pre-construction. Uh, so I'll leave the slide up just for a few minutes um, so that you can have a copy down the information if you would like. Um, if nothing else, I hope everyone has a great rest of the morning and a good weekend. Thank you.